Hi, good, ev good evening and welcome to the Deerfield uh, Select Board Board of Health meeting, which is also going to be shared with the Finance Committee and the Capital Improvement Planning Committee. Uh, those, those committees will, will call to order in a moment. Um, I'm calling the meeting to order on March 22nd, 2020 at 6.34 p.m. We're starting a little late. We had other meetings people were, were at. So um, this is at the main meeting room, municipal offices, 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield. There's also remote um, call-in um, for people who would like to call in. If you're, if you're in the TV and you, and you want to call in, the phone number is 206-331-4836. And then enter a PIN number of 805 805- 2271 and I believe FCAT will have that scrolled at the bottom of the uh, screen so if you didn't catch those numbers you can find it there on your TV um, so I'll call the meeting to order the and then uh, you have the finance one in yeah that's yeah that's fine yep, yep that's, that's good that's the right one okay no, I did no, already. We're read. good, Jonathan. Yep. Um, so go ahead. Um, I'll pass it over to uh, Jeff Upton to open his meeting. Yeah. Hi, I'm I'm Jeff Upton, co-chair of the Capital Improvement Planning Committee, and I'm calling the Capital Improvement Planning Committee of the joint meeting of March 26, Thursday, at 6:36 p.m. And Trevor, I don't know, but I just want to make sure, should we uh, make notice that this meeting is being recorded? Yes, yes, thank you very much. The meeting is being recorded and televised. Okay, and so oh. the capital improvement is open, and I will pass this along to John. Wait, first, um, Jeff, you should say who is there for the committee. Yeah, let's do a roll call for uh, for the for the okay, committee. so you want to do a roll call? Well, I'm I'm Jeff Upton. I'm with committee, and then I will let the other members because I came in late to announce. Um, John Pereski, John from Pers Capital yeah. Capital Improvement Planning. Carolyn Ness, Select Board Representative. Ken Cutterback, School Committee Representative to the Capital Improvement Planning Committee. That's it, I believe. Okay. Okay, yes. very good. Thank you very much. So there is four of us. Yes. So we do have a quorum. Yes. And John Pereski, I believe you're chairing the Finance Committee tonight? Uh, yeah, I guess. <laughs> um, okay. okay, so uh, do I need a motion to start the meeting? No, you would just do And then we have a roll call? Yeah, okay, just open so up with a roll call. Just, you'll be good to go. Okay, I need a roll call for the Finance Committee. I'm John Pereski, uh, acting as vice chairman. Finance committee. Peters. Go ahead, Bruce. Bruce St. Peter's finance committee. Jeff Upton, finance committee. Julie Chalfin, finance committee. Allison Vanderveld, finance committee. Great. Welcome, everybody. Um, Thank you so much, and I, and I appreciate your question. Yeah, go ahead, John. Sorry, Allison, Allison are you taking uh, minutes? I wasn't. Is anybody I, taking minutes? Do you need me to? It'll be recorded. Who usually does it? it, it will who be, usually does it? it, it uh, I usually take minutes for, for FINECOM. Casey did the minutes last time for the Joint Committee. Yeah, and this will be recorded, so we can always have access back that way, too. So if you want to get believe minutes it all, after. I believe the system also provides a transcription. Oh, great. Wonderful. Well, um, I really appreciate everybody um, calling in remotely. I know, and I appreciate the, the public's uh, patience with us as we all try to not talk over each other. It's difficult as we are, are in these difficult times to, um, to make sure everyone's heard and everyone has public participation in our, in our public meetings. So, um, so we've called this meeting together tonight to um, to just kind of get a get a rundown of where we're at for the budget um, I, again I just I want to thank the, co the community for everything they're doing um, to stay um, stay six feet apart apart from each other and I you know I know that's really tough for for people to do please um, you know it's a physical six feet it's not social so please remember to you know check in on your people and 
um, you know, make phone calls to your neighbors and, and check on people to make sure they have what they need. We're doing a lot at the, um, you know, our senior center director has been wonderful. Pe all, all, the, all the staff has come together, all volunteers in the town, and we're getting food out to our, our seniors, out to our children. Um, our children are, you know, having a tough time with this, but they're, they're, um, our superintendent's done a wonderful job of getting, getting information out to, um, you know, all the staff have, have come together and that we're getting education out to the kids and, you know, it's hard. They're not, they're not, you know, in a classroom together, but they are, um, a lot of times they FaceTime together and do, do exercises and quizzes together and they have a lot of, um, they're, they're getting some learning in. It's different, but it's, um, it's still learning, which is very helpful. And for all, um, probably aware that this, uh, Governor Baker also extended the school closure to, uh, May 4th at this moment. So, and we'll, we'll have more updates on in other venues. But really, the, the, the idea of tonight's meeting is to get together on the budget. And um, uh, Brenda's been working really hard, I wanna, I, and, and Casey, and I really want to put a shout out to all the department heads who have done so much. Um, you know, this is really trying times, and they've looked at their, their budgets and thought of ways that they could, uh, they could pare that back a little bit with the unknown amount of, you know, we have revenue that's not coming in that we expected to be coming in. We, you know, a couple weeks ago, we, we knew we were in a tough spot anyways, but after this, um, we're, you know, it really brings everything to clarity that we really have to try and cut back and, and be as conservative as we can with our budgets for the next year. And um, we'll probably have a better idea come September, October, November of, you know, once we see what free cash is and uh, where we are and, and see what budgets that we really trim back if they're gonna need some help. but. Um, and we're not sure what help we'll get from the federal government and state too. So, um, so I'm going to turn it over to Brenda. Um, maybe just give us a quick, uh, you know, up update of where where we're kind of at and where we're what what the numbers are looking at now. And that's Brenda Hill, our town accountant. So welcome. Okay. So um, you all have in front of you, or at least the committee members have in front of you, the uh, the first item is the budget expense detail. This does reflect the requested amounts, oh. reflects all of the concessions made by all the department heads. And I don't know if we want to go through them one by one um, or if we want to just look at it in total. If, do you want to do a quick kind of rundown of what concessions did come I, out of I the will. last one? And, and just to, to mention, we um, out of this meeting tonight, one thing I will ask the committees is to kind of get a number together. Um, I've been talking with the finance committee, um, with the um, superintendent to just let them know that, you know, we appreciated all the work they did on the budget, but we we'll probably are going to have to come back for an ask. And um, he, he requested, after some back and forth, he requested a number come out of the select board and finance committee for a, a number to give that he could give to the school committees to see if they can find some extra money in their budgets to help out as, as every other department head has been able to do. So um, back to you, sorry. Okay, yeah, so as Trevor said, we have concessions from all the departments at this point except for the schools, but they are working on something for us and will get back to us as soon as they can. Um, so you also have in your in your packet for those that have packets you have the list of all the concessions but I'll just go through them mm -hmm. one by one select board staff salaries uh, we eliminated the uh, part-time position out of that staff salary budget uh, giving back 10,600 to the budget um, under accountant expense I believe those reports were handed out um, at the last meeting, but there was a fee from our accountant, our CPA, for a single audit. And a single audit is required when you have uh, more than $750,000 coming from a federal agency. So the USDA is giving us money in excess of that for the wastewater treatment plant project. Um, our CPA is billing us for that over a three-year period and I had initially put all of that into accountant expense, realizing now that 75% of that should really be in the wastewater treatment plant budget, so I moved that amount out. The assessors gave up some items. Uh, they eliminated some line items, reduced some line items, giving us $1,175. The recertification expense, uh, we agreed that we could bring that down to $20,000 from 
Under IT hardware, we just reduced that by $1,000, hoping that 5000 would be sufficient for whatever we need next year, and maybe we just have to forgo some things till the following year. Mm -hmm. Contracted services, we had to add some money for intermediate uh, services uh, for the new way that we are now conducting meetings with our um, conference calling system. But then we reduced the class comp study by $5,000, um, hoping that $20,000 would be enough to cover it. Under the planning board, uh, Casey and I put our heads together and decided that we could take 1000 out of that budget hoping that with our new assistant town administrator and her abilities, that maybe we would be able to uh, keep the costs of the planning board down a little bit this year. Mm -hmm. um, under the police payroll, John has given back some money uh, in his salaries, $8,000. Thank you. Under the police cruiser, um, we were being optimistic in hoping that we would get $5,000 uh, in a grant to cover a portion of that cruiser. So we took 5000 out of that budget. Inspection salaries, uh, we went through and did a little uh, more in-depth history of, of where our time has been in the inspections department. And uh, Bob was generous enough to give us back almost $3,000 there. Under the highway department payroll, um, we have a, a money set aside in there for a part-time admin assistant and that was initially set to be 19 hours a week. We decided that we could probably do that position easily in 15 hours a week, so, so Kevin gave us back $3,800 there. Under test well monitoring, um, Kevin went back and looked at his history there and knowing that we're working with a new company who has been really good um, to work with in, as far as keeping the cost down, Kevin thought he could take 10,000 out of that budget. Board of Health salary, minimal thing, but <laughs> the Finance Committee added money in there for longevity pay at our last meeting. I went back and looked at the details. He's not eligible till, till fiscal 22, so I did take that back out. Senior center expense, um, we had some money in there for transportation costs. I understand we have contracts already for some of that, but um, Christina was able to pull some of that money back out of her budget. Now, keep in mind, if in fact she does need to um, provide more transportation money, she has money in a gift account, her and I were talking yes. about it the other day, that could possibly be used for that since yep. the seniors are really clamoring for more, more trips. And this, this shows $1,250, but of course, she, that's just Deerfield's portion because we gave back to the other two towns. So, she, so it was a bigger ask from her, um, but it just only shows you know a portion to us because the other percent goes out to Waitley and, Deer and Sunderland. Correct. Then under the library, the library has actually um, cut back their hours mm -hmm. and cut back the hours of each person as well. Um, very generous. They gave us back $7,000. Unemployment costs, here's, here's where, where we had to take away some of the money that was given to us. Yep. Um, realizing we're going to have some unemployment costs this coming fiscal year. I, I'm not even sure that 10,000 was enough. Uh, we're gonna have to look at that again now that the schools are considering some cuts. So, yep. so that get, that's what, what was given back to us in the omnibus budget. It totals about $50,000 altogether. Uh, like I said, we haven't heard from the schools yet, so we're hoping to get 50, 60,000 more from the schools. Yep. That's what I'm um, hoping. Uh, but it, it's about where we were expecting, uh, about what we were asking people to do. So, um, so I don't know if you want to just look at the omnibus budget at this point, since we're down there on that. Um, you, it, you, those of you that have packets uh, also have in there just kind of a, a synopsis of what it would look like if we voted everything as requested for the omnibus budget. And if you look at the third page of that, one, two, three, yeah. It's okay, uh, it, it, it's actually the other one, Trevor. It's it's the it's bigger print, 
Oh, oh, oh uh, I don't have yep, it in yep, front I got of me, it. but annual town meeting. No, yeah, finance committee budget, budget recommendations. recommendations. Okay, there yep. you go. Gotcha. One, two, three. Mm -hmm. yep. If you look at page three, we're still going to be using two hundred and twenty-seven thousand six hundred, I believe, in free cash to support the omnibus. Yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. Two hundred and twenty-seven thousand six hundred dollars to support the omnibus omnibus budget. Can you see see where that's at, everybody? Yep, right okay. in the middle of the page. I, I know that's higher than we, where we want to be. Um, looking at the history of our use of free cash for the omnibus budget, we've had years where we've used none. We've had years where we've used 100,000, 150,000, and we've had one year where we've used almost 240,000. So we are on the high side. But and this is this is less any support from the schools yet. So Correct. if we do get some help from the schools, we might get it back down to a exactly a year that's 175 yeah. or something like that. Right. Um, but overall, overall the picture doesn't look that bad. So there were capital items that were given up. Yes. Uh, the Ford F-150 was pushed off to fiscal 22 and the mobile data units uh, were pushed off to fiscal 22. And in doing that, and SCAMS also came up with some money for us, which, which also is not part of our omnibus budget. Um, they found another 50,000 that they had actually earmarked initially for um, a rescue vehicle. Um, but since they were given the rescue vehicle from the police department, they didn't have to spend the money on it. So he was able Thank to you. use 50,000 more in retained earnings to supplement the budget this year to bring down our assessments. Great. So for the town of Deerfield, that amounted to $25,881. Okay. Um, so total concessions all the way around so far were $143,300. What was that again? Say that again one more time. What was 143300 that's been given up. Oh, oh, in, uh, yes. In, if, if you include the omnibus budget. And the scams, yeah. And scams okay. and the capital items. Great. Um, and I know I'm kind of going through this really fast because I don't have anybody here asking questions. But <laughs> Well, what, what was the one question I had? Was, we talked about leaving money in free cash of about, you know, we were hoping for maybe three or 270 or what, do you know where, where we're at so far? I, I do, as a matter of fact, you also have that in your packets for those that have packets. Um, the revenue detail sheet, it's a okay. two, it's, it's a, it's a two page sheet. Yep. If you go to page two of that yep. report and you look okay. in that last section, it shows you certified free cash and then the amount withheld. Yep. The amount withheld is the amount that we are carrying over from everything. Our omnibus budget, our capital items, everything into fiscal 2021. That's and that's 246,000 at this point. Like so I said, if we get if we get 50 to 60,000 from the schools, we'd be we're looking 300. at 300,000. And that's kind of where we wanted to be, 270 to Brenda, three. I'm sorry. Uh, could you just repeat that? Did you say 246000 Yes. Two, yes. 246 and $40 is where are we're are at you right see, now. Are you seeing that, uh, Carolyn? That's a little bit lower than our target, but not that far off. Well, if we get some help from the school, we'll be right at about 300 I mean, it, fingers crossed. So that yeah. ha we don't have the school stuff in there yet. So if we could get that from them will be kind of right where we were all hoping to be. I mean, we'd love it to be more, but I think that's where we all settled on last meeting. Well, and that's, that's um, this revenue detail reflects that I have projected downward the local receipts by about 100,000 over what we had initially thought we could, could take in in fiscal 21 and that was due after, to the COVID virus. That was after last meeting, right? After last meeting, we talked about 300 and we thought yes. what we'd have for revenue and then Brenda went back and looked at everything and COVID hit and she took another 100, 100 out or I something did. like that. Now, is, is it enough? I don't know. Is it too much? It's, you I could throw a dart can, right now and you wouldn't know. can tell. Uh, I did do a history of when we had our crash in 2008 and what it looked like. Um, 
I don't think we'd go back that far. So I took something in the middle and said, okay, this is yep. an average of, of what we lost in that five year period. Um, or this is, this is what we took in as an average in that five year period. So I'm gonna just budget that for right now. And I think, um, I think that makes sense. You know, we made it two thirds of the year through the year before COVID hit. So we're really dealing with loss of revenue of about one third of the year. And we don't know how much of that is gonna be lost. Um, but, um, and we do, we do have stable, general stabilization. And I feel like I think this budget puts us in a pretty decent spot. We'll see what free cash is in the fall and, you know, and see what we've done to these budgets. I know we've asked a lot from Kevin um, in different areas, Chief, you know, a lot of areas, and we, we're going to have to look at that in the fall and see if we've, we've hit the target pretty well and they may need some help or a transfer from, free, uh, from the reserve, um, you know, and see where we're at at that point. But the... Um, and then, you know, and then when we start doing this for 2022, we're going to have to look, you know, see what the year fell apart or didn't and may have to do, you know, we do have sta general stabilization to help us in when it's raining and it's pouring right now. So I think we'll have a better idea later on. Right. Um, I, I know a lot of towns. Jeff Upton, how much is in, oh. how much is in stabilization right now? I believe it's about a million three. A million three? in the general stabilization thank you yep go ahead jeff okay, you had a you. question yeah jeff up in here uh one question one comment uh sure. question being as far as the capital plan and the request for stabilization is there anything left as far as the stabilization request for 21 no for no stabilization not at the moment we did okay, we so, did remove so that's that down to zero that yes. to help us get to this number correct yes. yep and we i was thinking maybe when we got to the fall and we saw where we were at you know if it if the bottom didn't completely fall out we could always put stabilization in in the fall right no i i understand completely we're yep. in a in a tough situation here and i just that's why i wanted to know if if that number was zero yes and it is right I, I i think i think the i can't speak for the entire committee but i think the entire committee would probably understand this scenario my other concern is that uh you know and i'm glad to hear we're getting to the point where we had talked about before but my other concern and i agree trevor uh with with your statement we don't know where we're at uh, part of it with this virus is having an effect, obviously, and it could have a major effect on the next couple of years here, budget-wise. Yes. Uh, you know, because w we look where we're at now for this year, and we thought we were in halfway decent shape going in. Uh, the next year or two, especially with our revenue, is probably going to take a fairly major hit here. Yep. Uh, uh, hopefully, we're just aware that things might even be uglier uh, the next two budget years. Yes. I think that that's why we didn't um, want to get to a point of using general stabilization now. Yeah. Um, right. That's why we asked all the department heads to go back and relook at their budgets and see what they could what they could shave from them, um, because. We think that might happen at some point in time, but we certainly want to put it off as long as possible. Yep. Is there another question out there I heard? Um, this is the, to say also, I, I would oh. like to thank everybody for their efforts here because this is not an easy task. Yeah. And that means all the people, all our officials at town hall and all the, all the, uh, you know, all the departments that are trying to help us out here. Yep. I'll second that for sure. Um, uh, this is Carolyn. I, I feel like um, we're, especially if we get the school contribution, that we're going to be okay. This is conservative enough, and that if we we just have to remain flexible, like a, like Brenda said, we have to. The, the revenues are forecasted down. We honestly don't know how down they're going to be. So the best thing to do is wait till the fall to see where our free cash is. Everyone is being very conservative. And um, then we can decide whether to put money into the capital stabilization or not, and then look at our, where we are. I think it's really important to have a regular 
quarterly joint meeting so that we can yep. review what we where we are, the status of where we are, and what we think the projections are. Not necessarily to take any action, but be on top of stuff. Yeah. Um, I think Brenda and everybody did a fantastic job. Yep. But I think we need to um, look at this again. And, um, you know, in a few weeks, obviously we have to get ready for town meeting whenever we have town meeting. Yep. But I, I think once we start 2021, I, I think we have to have a, a minimum of quarterly meetings just until we figure out how bad this is. Yeah, I when agree. When we had the crash in, um, you know, the, in 2008-9, it was a two- or three-year uh, really hard times, but mm -hmm. that was because the institutions crashed. The, the con this is a different hit on the economy, and I'm not really sure what the bounce back is because – um, you know, there are cases showing up in the southern hemisphere, which means we are going to have a wave in the fall. So until the vaccine comes, this could go through the fall first quarter. Um, so I think we have to review this in the fall first quarter to see what is that impact. Yep. Yeah, I, I, Carolyn, I agree with you. A, a quarterly review uh, where we're at for, you know, at least the next year to two is a very good idea because that way it doesn't get out of hand and you're stuck with it all, all at once at the end. We, um, and also this is Trevor. Oh, is there any other question? Go ahead. I don't want yeah, to... this is Ken, Ken Cutterback. Hey, I just Ken. had a question. I, I don't know if it's, uh, you know, it's, um, why it's happening but for some reason i keep not hearing whatever the number is that you're looking for from the schools oh yeah that had, the school that, the great question school <laughs> great question we hadn't i was hoping to take a vote you know and discuss that um and we could do that now um i was we, yeah, i mean you don't need to do it now i just want no, to make, wait, I, I just want to have a number in my head yeah so i can communicate Sure. Prior to you communicating with Darius. Yes, so. yes, absolutely. So what I was thinking was, um, w well, with Brenda and all, we were looking at if we asked for 30 from uh, Deerfield and 30 from Frontier. Now, I know that means a much bigger number for Frontier, but I know that the other towns are probably going to be in the same boat we are. Um, and, you know, I don't know if they can get to those numbers, but, it, you know, I just we thought that would be safe that we could if we could get somewhere between... 50 and 60 from the schools that would really you know that would get us to that that spot where we needed to be um or at least at least okay. try and yeah. what we what we um talked about uh, initially was it looked like we needed a, about a hundred and a hundred thousand dollars to get where we felt comfortable on free cash and so we divided it a third a third a third a third for the elementary school, a third for Frontier, and a third for the town. But then, yeah, but then we ended up, after that, we, we came, came down a whole bunch more. We came down another 100 out of revenue, and then, and then we looked at capital and stuff. So we all kind of got to where we were looking for another 270, I think, is where we well, were. Two, yeah. 200. 200, I guess. Well, that was Sorry. before we lowered. Correct. That was before we lowered revenue. Yeah, that's right. That's mm -hmm. right. So we kind of, with everybody in, we thought, yeah, 30, 30, and, and then we did a lot more than that. But I think, um, so we thought that was a, a, a fair number to ask for, and we just, you know, not sure if they'll be able to, but we thought we'd respectfully ask. Uh, this is uh, Chris Harris, resident of Easter Avenue in South Deerfield. Um, hey, Chris. Could I ask a question here? Sure. You may want to turn down your uh, TV or mute it. You may want to turn down your uh, no, okay. your TV is muted. I'll, I'll take it off the handset. Oh, okay. You were just getting some feedback, but yeah, go ahead. Yeah, sorry, sorry. I I would took it off the handset because I'm okay. watching live. Yep. What's going on in the world? So, um, so the question is, Brenda just presented these revised budgets and and everybody chipping in and cutting things. Do any of those budgets, other than collective bargaining agreements, include any increase in um, salaries or wages? Yes. 
I mean, we had, well, uh, the, the budgets from the schools have already been, I mean, the, the negotiations for the schools have already been signed and, and are done. So Frontier is already um, is completed and, and the elementary schools, uh, Union 38 did a one year uh, budget because we couldn't, one year contract because we couldn't uh, settle on a three year yet. So those are done and then uh, we have a 1.5 um, COLA for our, for our employees, which is kind of matching what the schools are and, kind of working on. And, and okay, so, so I understand these collective bargaining agreements, these contracts that you have, you, not much you can do with that other than when you're in a total emergency and crisis, you renegotiate them. Mm -hmm. But all the other employees, under these circumstances, I think the priority should be job preservation, benefit okay. preservation, et cetera. I don't understand why there would be a COLA. Well, because um, at the time we felt there should be, and I, I, you know, I have a hard time allowing 70% um, of our employees to, to get a COLA and the others that work just as hard not. Um, so I have a hard time separating those two um, just because, you know, I mean, we could get we could get unions in all of our all of our um, places of work, but I'd I'd rather not. Um, you know, at the moment, I mean, I I'm not against unions, but I think the way we run things now is pretty fair. Um, and I, I just I just don't want to penalize you know a quarter of our workforce when 75 percent of it um, is not being penalized. But that's and just I'm my just that's just my opinion. I'm just streaming right across my TV right now as I look at it. 3.3 million people declaring unemployment, yep. filing for unemployment this week. Yes. And so, uh, you know, I think there has to be a practicality here that this thing isn't going away quickly, and the recovery might be longer than we think, even though, as Carolyn said, it's a totally different animal than anything we've ever faced since World War II, frankly, in terms of any recessionary environment. And so they're all been different, actually, since World War II, but this one is especially uh, separate and distinct. Is yeah. that why would we be, why wouldn't we be signaling to everyone that, look, we're just tapping everything right now, holding down the fort, and then we'll see how things develop. Well, I think, I think that's kind of what we did. And if we have to get to a spot where we need to make layoffs, we would, we would do that. But, um, you know, I don't want to... Put the cart before uh, you. I just don't think it's the right right thing to do. I mean, that, again, this is my opinion, and and there's still debate to have until we get to town meeting. But um, I, I just I didn't think it was fair to treat one one section of our employees differently than another. So, but if we need to make further cuts in different areas to make that happen, we may have to. Um, we'll, we'll um, I, I but, I, but I but I think Chris, signaling, I think signaling that we're capping wages right now is is an appropriate and a modest measure but you, rather than uh, you know everybody. i wouldn't delay that i would yeah. think yeah, but you chris, can't chris. employee base and chris. say say we need to we need to hold down the fort right now because we don't exactly know what's going to happen and maybe there's more substantive uh, reductions later but uh, but but i i i'm hopeful that's not going to happen but i think I think we need to like signal but, that right now. It's but like, you're not signaling have, it. You, you know, you have a job, you have a salary, you have health benefits, and that's what we're going to hold down the fort on. Yeah, but you, you Chris. Trevor, uh, yeah, go ahead. You uh, had a question. Yeah, Trevor. Um, yeah. yes, actually, I'd kind of like to, to chime in with with on on Chris's. Mm -hmm. Um, basically, the only ones that non collective bargaining at this point in time is. Eight at highway and approximately ten at town hall, um, and so the rest of of the salaries are covered through collective bargaining, whether it be through the school or through through the uh, uh, police department. Yeah. Um, so that's all I got to say about that one. But I would like to just throw in real quick two things. Uh, one on the capital, um, the the thirty two five for the for the pickup truck. Um, obviously, no problem whatsoever. Push off to FY twenty two. Um, we just need to keep mindful of each time we push off year, because presently right now, I'm looking at another 195,000 next year for a loader, which brings me to a total approximately 22, or excuse me, 227,500 instead of 
just 195 or 325. So just yeah. everybody's aware of that. Yeah. Well, now I, the only other thing I'd like to do on my the only thing I'd like to do on my standard test well monitoring for the ten thousand dollars that I re, that I return mm-hmm. that is so long as I do not have to drill any more wells. Understood. If I'm required to drill wells. By DEP, I will need to ask for more money. We understand. Yeah, there'll That's be there'll you. be areas yeah, Kevin, that we may have to go to. Transfer. Right, right. That's exactly right. We may have to you do know, a. I, yep. Yep, that makes sense. And you know, uh, just to respond to both Kevin and Chris is the um, the coal is, as Chris said, a modest amount, but you're also affecting the most valuable assets that we have within the town which are our employees. And if you start treating employees differently for any reason, you start creating big wedges that are very difficult to get over. So, you know, it's, um, it's better to try to focus on other areas than that one and a half percent. It's, you know, it's, and just and what makes sense in you know my mind, you know my whole career has been handling staffing uh, from you know uh, very large staffs to smaller staffs, uh, you know smaller staffs for 75 people, larger staffs for 300 plus. But you know you can't be driving that wedge in between different groups because you don't recover from that. Okay. Any um, any. Further comment on uh, oh, so we've got one the, other thing on. Go ahead. Uh, just on Kevin on your thirty-two-five. If you still on Kevin, he's probably muted. But okay. yeah, um, on the thirty-two-five, yep. muted. Go ahead. So my thought process was, well, look what free cash is, and if we need a special town meeting in the fall, we'd put that into the fall special town meeting. So no, that that's great. I appreciate that. Uh, you know, I, I understand where we're at and what we need to do. Um, I just wanted to make sure everyone was well aware that, you know, because when, when we put together, you know, we just didn't do just a five-year outlay. We did like a 27-year outlay. So with that being said, you know, that just pushes everything out. And, and I understand where we're coming from. So, you know, you know, squeaking another year if we have to, I mean, it is what it is because we need to be able to preserve what we have for the town and the services that we're providing at present time to make sure that you know we're providing properly for our residents. Yep. And and Kevin, I just want to follow up. I did bring that up as far as the capital plan and how it will affect uh, going forward. Obviously, mm-hmm. carrying another thirty-two five into next year is going to boost that request amount of, from the highway department. I and I think hopefully. I think I know the capital improvement uh, committee members are aware of that, and uh, hopefully we are able to convey that to the other people too. So at least this is not the first time they've heard it. Yeah, they they are aware of it, and the same thing is going to happen with the police department on their uh, data units also. Yeah. So and we're just going to have to see how this plays out as far as budget for next year and revenues. So, yep. but thank you for uh, bringing that forward. And here again on the revenues, yeah, no, completely. I'm a little bit more optimistic Sorry, than the other ones that have spoken because you look at the history and, you know, the 2008 crash, even the Depression were all financial institutes that caused it. This is an illness-born recession. Granted, we hit, got hit hard with the, those high unemployment numbers, but that's because all the service industries have been shut down. Uh, as soon as we start getting people well again and out of this crisis, those, that unemployment is going to drop real quickly because these people are going to go back to work. And there is, you know, there is yeah. the fundamentals of the economy are, are, have been really good, uh, fa- fairly good. And then, you know, if this $2.2 trillion gets infused into the economy and, and we can keep those businesses going that, so in a month or so if we can get back to work or you know, as as and it, and if the testing comes along, that'll help. We can get some some people, you know, that you know maybe have gone through this and now have an immunity, can test and make sure we can get segments and sections of this economy back running again, you know, quicker than others. It's going to be. It's totally. This is just 
nobody's ever dealt with this before, so it's really hard to figure out how it'll go. But um, I am I am hopeful that that we can get moving back again. I know we won't be packing churches for for Easter, but I think we'll you know hopefully just past that a bit, we'll be a little better off. <laughs> right. So. Well, uh, you know, just so I can this jump again, uh, we can only control the now and the present and what we know. Mm -hmm. And the actions that we're taking now, I feel there are the appropriate actions, and I think we're on the right course. And as far as the virus goes, that's just, it's not predictable. Yeah. Uh, you know, it could, ha you know, we could be out of the woods in two months. It could be eight months, ten months before uh, we turn the corner. So that's something that... Yeah. We have to be aware of, but we can't predict it. Yep. So I think our focus right now with, with the budget, this year's budget, being aware of how it could impact the next couple of years is a good idea. But I think we're on, on the right page as far as, as dressing as much as we can now and putting ourselves in a position that going forward uh, we're not going to be – short you know right. the three hundred thousand dollar target i thought was a pretty good target uh to to try to carry over so that gives us a little flexibility yep. going in with with you know fifteen sixteen thousand dollars would just be a killer yes so i think we're on the right path and i think we're heading in the right direction i and agree with you jeff you know it's we've <clears throat> got to be conservative now but we also you know have got to be looking at the future and you know you know it's Having two economists, economists in the room is like having two lawyers in the room. <laughs> They're just not going to agree. Oh, yeah, no question. And I then, agree. I do think, too, that, you know, we, we are going to have to look, you know, I, I'm sure there's been years that there have been no steps and no colas. And I think, you know, as we get through this and have a better view of 2022, you know, we'll just have to cross that bridge when you get there. I don't want to ever get to that spot. Um, you know, because as David said, they are our most valuable people. Um, it's what what makes the town run. It's you know, it's really hard to get the knowledge that that's here and the, the staff that's here are fantastic to keep us all running, especially in, a, in an issue like this. So, can I, I jump in? You please, please, please. Sure. Hi, everybody. Hi, there. Hey, it's John. For those that can't see me on camera, so right now we have about 1.3 million dollars in stabilization, capital stabilization. Jeff, where are we at right now? Six, about six hundred. Capital stable. We're a little over six hundred thousand. All right, so we're six hundred thousand dollars in capital stabilization, with any permit fees and turn-in money this fall. Brenda underestimating revenues. You know, lowering her numbers by a hundred thousand dollars. We're looking at certifying free cash in the fall, roughly probably a million plus again, maybe. We hope. The red roof. When I was at a call there three times today, the halls are packed. The rooms are rented. Good. Good. Okay. So our revenues are going to decrease slightly. Where I think we're going to see initial hit yep. is excise tax. Yep. That people may not buy a new car for a year or two. However, that is the primary purpose of the stabilization account. Yep. Because we have one or two low years, we all of a sudden get a boom. Because everybody's cars are no longer three, four years old when they replace them, or five or six or 10. Now they're seven, eight, they're 12 or 14 years old, and people are going to start buying new cars. That excise tax in two to three years is going to spike again. Especially with rates as low as they'll be. Yeah, yes. so everybody in Deerfield is extremely well educated. Mm -hmm. Most people in this town are extremely fiscally responsible so a lot of us take a step back like our own personal finances and we start to cut back immediately i, I want to make sure that we focus on the big picture that in total we have two to three million dollars in reserve on any one day when we start focusing at a 1.5 percent cola increase for employees and we start focusing on morale issues because of the world around us is dealing with a massive pandemic that number equates to under $20,000. Yes. We're going to impact employees' morale that are already stressed out because of the world collapsing, supposedly, around us that are dealing with child care issues, that are dealing with family health issues, and literally work their buns off for the town. So we're really going to reduce that number down to 20 
thousand dollars of a 1.5 mil or 15 million dollar operating budget. We have to be careful to not focus that intricate. So, you know, I think we're in a very stable financial position. I think we need to be cautious yep. and cognizant. I think that we are from green to yellow, but I don't think we should be throwing up any red flags yet. I think Brenda's done an amazing job. I think we as department heads have given a lot back, but I think in a roundabout manner, then she refined the numbers down $100,000 in less revenues <laughs> and literally shocked us all again where we thought we were good. So it- uh, She was holding a little aside, side, wasn't she? It, well, <laughs> she's acclimated to Deerfield where we always yeah. make the numbers work to our favor. <laughs> so I think in general, we're in a very good position right now there's no reason we should be throwing a red flag. We do need to be green to approaching yellow. We need to be cognizant and cautious, not overboard. There is a difference. Yeah. I, I mean, I do feel like with all the work that everybody's done, Brenda's done, all the department heads mm. have done, Casey's done, I mean, we, we've, yeah. we've done pretty everybody's good. Everybody's worked with good. us on this. Yeah. And so what we've tried to do is impact the, lessen the impact as much as we can by picking the things in our individual budgets that we think we can do without yeah. and being mindful of the fact that it is not easy to replace a municipal employee this is very particular work it requires at the very well, least six that. six to six months to a year to yes. onboard completely because the rules and regulations are extremely difficult to learn mm -hmm. they're broad and the regulations that we all under operate under are very specific to municipalities and change a lot. A and they change but they and they can change very quickly mm, as we can all just see as we've seen in the last five years just employment five regulations minutes. for municipal employees mm -hmm. have changed significantly yeah. so that kind of talent doesn't grow on trees and we need to value that talent mm -hmm. so on a secondary note Everybody knows that yeah, so I'm a... This is Chris Harris. This is Chris Harris weighing in. Um, yeah, I heard Chief Maturik talk about reserves, et cetera. All I would say to everyone there, as you get closer to annual meeting, uh, town meeting, you need to explain this reserve per position to the town and to the town's people, and you need to do it in layman's terms. Yeah. A lot of times when I go to select board meetings, et cetera, you use these acronyms, these abbreviations about all this kind of stuff. And, you know, it, it's like a little incredulous to some of us that aren't, aren't totally familiar with that. But I think you need to convince your, your constituency that what is the position of the town and, and we are buffered, et cetera. So I'm going to trust that those numbers mm -hmm. are there, et cetera. I don't yeah. study them on a day-to-day -day basis, you know them, Brenda knows them, et cetera. And you need to communicate that in a concise way, in a clear way, in a, in a layman's term to the people that we're in good shape. That's if, a, if we're not in good shape, don't say that. But, but I, I think there's a communication gap here, too, in terms of explaining to people where we're at and where we're going. That's a very, very, very good point, Chris. I, I'm glad you brought that up. Um, I'll definitely take that to heart, and we'll, we'll make sure that gets done at this, this annual town meeting, and I'll try to do that more and more at the, um, at the select board level as well. I mean, I, you, you're right. I mean, it takes years to kind of, for me, it's taken me years to really understand this, and I'm still learning every day. But, um, but yeah, I need to be able to relay that a little bit better in layman's terms as to where we, at, where we are at financially, why we're making the decisions we're making, and um, try to make sure that everybody's you know, buying in and understanding, and, and certainly voicing their, their disagreement if they have one or their agreement. So uh, thank you for making that point. Um, Anything else? <clears throat> just Ken Crudebeck. Trevor, I had a question for you and possibly Jeff. Um, I'm wondering if there's any further discussion on the capital plan or and is the capital planning committee still necessary to this joint meeting? Uh, yes, great question because you probably have, have had enough of meetings. Um, I, you know, I think we were pretty good with the plan the way it was. I mean, I was still going to, you know, it, it, 
depending on how this meeting went and what we hear from the schools, I, you know, I personally have, a, personally, but I've been shepherding a project at the town common to try and get some work going there for the last four years. Um, if, if we don't get help from the school, that might be an area where I may have to put that off as well. Um, so, but I'm, I don't have really any say over any other projects that are going on on that list, but that was just one area that I kind of kept in the back of my pocket, but I, I'd really rather not, um, you know, hold off on that project if I don't have to, but, but if we do, there, that's something there. But no, I think we're, we're good unless you have any other questions for us. Right, no, my, this is Jeff. My only comment, uh, Trevor, and it'd be to the select board that uh, on the capital items that you're looking to delay for FY22 and FY uh, for both items, the yes. uh, pickup truck and the data units, yes, uh, that's at the discretion of the select board to amend that capital plan. Yes. So that doesn't take any action from the uh, committee as far as the capital improvement committee because we've already submitted that plan to the select board and had the public meeting. Yes. So uh, the select board at this time can amend that at the uh, annual town meeting and if you feel Trevor at some point in time that you need to address the uh, town common then you could do the same with that also okay uh, that's at the select board's discretion is my understanding of it and that's what we did last year with an item that uh, you know we had already submitted the plan in that and yep. Uh, I believe legal counsel reviewed it, and that was the process. So, okay. uh, other than that, as far as the uh, capital committee, I don't believe we have any other further business. So, okay. uh, uh, hang on, Jeff. Did you want to have? Oh, go ahead, Jeff. This is John. I'm representing the finance committee with this one. Uh, yeah. The finance committee, I don't believe, has voted the capital budget, uh, at least not according to Brenda's expense detail. Right. The select uh -oh. board is, yeah, the select board, the finance committee sat in and listened uh, to the presentation, but the select board has to, uh, from the language of the bylaw language, the select board in the, in the finance committee have to... Uh, vote that between the two of them now for for the right, answer. Right, I understand meeting. that. But if but right. if they're voting and they what do they do if they have a question? That's all I'm thinking. Do we right. do we just well, have I, someone from C I P C be there and or right. they reach yeah. out to them? Somebody, yes, exactly. Yeah, we don't have to okay. have a formal meeting for that. So okay. and I mm -hmm. seeing how you and I both sit on the finance committee, either one of us could respond to any of their questions. Thank you. And so, okay, fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Jeff, you might want to mention the results of this evening's meeting. Yes, uh, the results of this evening meeting is the uh, Capital Improvement Committee did recommend the uh, uh, North Main Street project that John Pachurik, Chief John Pachurik brought forward, and that was for the uh, public park uh, using grant money and CPA money. Great, that's wonderful. Thank so, you. So we did, we did as a committee vote to recommend. And again, that uh, goes to the uh, Board of Selectmen, uh, or Select Board, excuse me, and they will need to amend the capital improvement plan to reflect that. I already spoke to Carolyn about that. Okay. Thank you. Ken, I appreciate that. Yeah, and I and I also wanted to make note for Casey since she wasn't in the meeting that I believe planning board needs to sign off on a land acquisition. So you should make sure that that gets on their next agenda if indeed they do need to do that. I believe oh. that's in the town bylaws. So. Okay. okay. Thanks, thank Ken. Yep. Casey acknowledged that. So thank you. Um, so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. I can off my to do list. <laughs> so you cross it off your to-do list, Carolyn. So I think the yeah, um, right. I think the capital I think the capital so as far committee as the capital improvement committee. Are we done with our meeting? I'd like to Any? make a motion to adjourn. Okay. Any second? Okay. So the motion's, 
Motion has been made to adjourn. It has been in sec seconded. So uh, all those in favor? Ken Cutter, back yes. yes. Jack Davey, John yes. John Paresky, yes. Okay, John Paresky, yes. Ken Cutter, back yes. Uh, Jack Davey, yes. Carolyn? Carolyn Ness, yes. And Jeff, yes. Thank so you, guys. The, uh, capital stabilize. Yeah, excuse me. The uh, I'll get it pretty quick here. <laughs> capital Improvement Committee has adjourned this meeting at 7:29. Thank you. Um, thank you, everybody. Appreciate so, your help. Well, very much. Wait, before uh, before the finance committee takes off, I just wanted to uh, get some clarity. Are, are you okay with um, us sending a request for thirty thousand and thirty thousand to the to the superintendent and school committees? Uh, do we need? I don't how think do we do this as a committee. I don't I think, think there's a vote needed. Just a consensus. There's just a consensus. So I just I think, and then then our select board will make a vote to do that. But all I just, right. I, all right. I don't think the finance committee has to vote it, but I, I, I you know, that would be up to the to the select board to, asked, to vote that. But do, as far as looking, he's asking for, us how we feel about it, though. Yeah, I just wondering right. if you. Yeah, have, yeah if he's asking far, us how we feel about it. Does anybody, yeah. anybody on the finance committee, disagree with them asking for the thirty and the thirty? This is Allison. I think it, it sounds fine and reasonable to me. Thank you. This is Jeff, and I, I, I feel comfortable with that also. This is Julie. I agree as well. Uh, Pereski agrees. So I think we're okay, Trevor. Okay. Thank you. Well, um, I guess I'll, I'll make a motion to um, have Casey uh, write a request to this, both school committee chairs and the um, superintendent to make that formal request if they see any way possible to do that. For thirty thousand each. Dave Wolf from I'll second it. Any further discussion? Can I jump in for one sec? Yes. I think uh, your request is, and I'm a huge fan of the schools. Everybody knows that. I think your request is very reasonable, seeing that local agencies in this town gave back one hundred forty-six thousand dollars. Right. Remember, that's thirty percent of the operating budget gave back one hundred and forty-six. Before you subtracted the ten grand, it's a hundred and fifty-six thousand, yes. which is thirty percent of the total budget. Right. So I think thirty thousand from each is very reasonable. And I love Darius, Tina, George, yes. everybody over they're there that wonderful. does an amazing job. They do. I think it's just a tough time that we're looking for a tad bit. Yeah, yeah. And I, th I think they're aware. And I'm yeah. hoping they're they're receptive to that. So, um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Trevor McDaniel. Aye. Dave Wolfram. I Carol enough. Thank you so much. Um, any other? Did you want to finish any thoughts, Chief? Are you good? I think. Are you all set? No, I think I'm okay. good. Okay, yeah, Brenda, do you have any, other stuff. anything else, Brenda? Uh, no, I I'm good unless somebody had any any more questions. But no, I'm, I'm guessing I think, not. I think we're pretty good. No, the, my um, recommendation is we do town meeting at the uh, as I said earlier at the Frontier Football Field, outdoor that we pick two June dates. Yeah. On a beautiful Saturday morning at well, 9 or 10 o'clock in the morning. I can give an update on that a little bit, uh, which is not much of an update, but I'm going <laughs> to look into Casey. So uh, in talking with Casey, just to let the Finance Committee know and, and others, um, that, that Casey and, and Barb have been working uh, tirelessly with the Governor's Office and the um, Secretary of State and trying to kind of Legal figure counsel. out <laughs> and, and our council trying to figure out how to how to work this and typically we, we run one warrant that calls for a town meeting and an election we I believe we're probably going to peel that into two actual warrants this year because the requirements that are on the election are they're making changes to that and the town meeting are a little different so if we kept them separate that might make logistics a little easier I think we're going to shoot for June 1st uh, for an annual town meeting, and then um, June 8th would be our election the following Monday, as we typically do. And we're, you know, we, we may have to change that in the future. Again, everything's fluid, but and we're still waiting for stuff from the from the state to see if that's even possible. So one of the question, one of the comments, um, we had a conference call meeting. Barbara, me, Dan, and Lisa Mead, our town council. Great. Um, we have not called a town meeting yet. Right. So the select board can postpone town meeting. 
the new elections legislation that was signed on Monday gives us um, gives us some allowances in how we manage both the election and the warrant. Deerfield typically has one warrant. We are going to have to split that warrant. One of the things that we talked about was we annual town meeting does not have a quorum requirement, so. We're concerned about people being in a room. Mm -hmm. We're also concerned about pushing past May so that there's a better chance of this having slowed down. Um, so Barbara and I talked with Dan because as the moderator, he, it's runs, his meeting. The, he runs the it's town his meeting. meeting. Yep. Um, and the consensus seems to be to try to stick to a normal um, meeting schedule like we, like we would do where you have a week between town meeting, yep. a Monday night, because that's what people are used to doing. That was our conversation. Mm -hmm. I know mm -hmm. John and I have talked about doing it over at Frontier. Outside, because um, that's where we have the meeting anyways, Frontier. Well, we but, have it at, we, but in having the, in it the outside, my, yeah. we didn't talk about that on the phone with yep. Barb and Dan, but um, what we were trying to do is stick to a pattern that people yeah. understand. Yeah, and are so used to. So I'm asking the board to meet to next Tuesday formally okay. to consider postponement with a recommendation of dates that we should do it. Yep. Um, and we will have the specific votes that you need to take to do that. Okay. So what we're tr what we were Could trying to do. Could I just make do. a comment? I'm I'm okay with this process moving forward but do we have a cutoff date is it still like a month ahead yes that we have to make a decision where they're going to hold the meeting or not yes so here's the thing carolyn so we're talking like a may 1st may 1st decision kind of deadline no. no the indication with this continued postponement of schools opening that's really an indication that we could see another push to continue with the non-essential personnel order and the stay at home request from the governor's office. We may not see this lift by the end of April, so we need to make a decision about town meeting so that we're prepared. So if we well, do my, have to go my, past May. My thought, um, on, on this would be to recommend um, we do this outside in uh, like on the football field and everybody just brings um, their own armchair you know I mean a lawn chair and we plop everyone far enough apart that we don't have social you know we don't have social interaction or you know we're physically distancing we have social interaction but we have Carolyn, physical our cool distancing Carolyn, are, are cool, coolers allowed? <laughs> as long as they have soft drinks. I think all of us, truthfully, by then, I think all of us will be ready for coolers. <laughs> <laughs> so I think, so we'll get some direction by Casey know, for next I Tuesday, I think. But so yeah. logistics I, might be I, an issue I with just, that. from a public health point of view, I don't know when we can make that decision that would meet all these deadlines i mean the normal deadlines for a town meeting that's all the problem uh, with we'll this carolyn the... is we have not received a a decision from the legislature and the governor about town meeting they have two disparate bills right now they're reviewing and so recommendation from council is to start making these decisions so and that we still we have, have the flexibility to do that. Right, and then we can push words, them off. We may and not know whether we can go past June 30th. That's what's discussed, but in two very different ways. Can I butt in? I'm sorry, this is John Perez. I'm sorry to interrupt, but we've got finance committee people here. Is it possible yes. that they could be dismissed? No. <laughs> I was just going to, John, I was just going to make a motion to adjourn the finance committee. Yeah, that's fine. I, uh, I just we, really, we, I just. A couple, that's great, Jeff. There's a couple of administrative things, so we still have things to vote on. Um, so we need to set up a date. Do we want to do this now? Do we do it later? I don't know how we do it in a situation. You can I, schedule Casey a meeting help. offline. You can schedule a meeting offline to do that. Yeah, okay, can I we would... do it by email? Yes, you can. If yes. it's simply to schedule a meeting, yes, you can. Yes, email's fine for that. 
Right. Uh, I would, all right. I would just, John, what you may want to do is just email Skip and just let him know that the the uh, joint committee met. That's a good idea. Yeah. That, okay. And then just and just tell him that whenever he feels appropriate to schedule a meeting, that's up to him. Okay. 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 So I I'll make the motion to adjourn the finance committee meeting. Second. Who seconded? Okay. Who was that uh, second? Any, second? Any discussion? Any discussion? Who was any the discussion? second? Who was who was the Who second? Was the second? I, Jeff Bruce. Upton. Jeff Upton. Jeff, Jeff made the, the motion. Who oh, seconded? No, I, I Who seconded? Right. John yes. Boreski seconded. Thank you. Anybody, anybody opposed to the motion to adjourn? <laughs> All right, we'll do a roll call. Uh, John Boreski's in favor to adjourn. Jeff Upton in favor to adjourn. Julie Chalfin, yes. Thank Allison Van Der Bruce St. Peter, yes. Bruce St. Peter, yes. Thank you, guys. That everybody. That's Thank everybody. You, then the finance committee is adjourned March 26th at 7:40 p.m. Thank, Thank you, guys, you. very much. I really appreciate Thank you your coming. Thanks, everybody. Yep. Thank you. Be everybody. safe. Good night. Now. Good night. Do you Good night. Have, Thank you. Do you have Good night. anything You're else? Welcome. Good night to you too. So, from a, a practical logistical perspective, if we had Perfect. to, we could use the football field. One sec. Yeah, it's, it's logistics that both Dan how, and Barb are asking about. Well, yeah, we, and I'm yeah. sitting here thinking, okay, how do we present we're, the omnibus budget? We're losing, right. we're losing, uh, we're losing your volume of your microphones or something. You're losing our volumes. Uh, let me yeah, something yeah, no, happened to the Trevor. sound. Okay, um, sorry, it, it came back. It came back. Oh, it did. Okay, I turned it up a little bit. Maybe I'll check with Jonathan too. Okay. Yeah, so logistically, um, we can set up tables on the way in. We can give people all the handouts necessary. Right. We can set up speakers. We can, uh, we can ask the AV folks up there to set up speakers. You could do one center area. You could do both stands and literally have counters for Dan and set up the speakers out there. And you actually could set up a very eloquent event. We could set up, if we needed to, two or three cops to monitor the perimeter because you have a gated track you that's all fenced track. in. So inside that fence, construction by so, then. we could so. hand out the budget without the voted well, amounts on it, and people could just follow along that way. I'm just concerned about people being able to speak, and that's really the issue with any meeting. Yeah, you should you be able know, to speak. This, yeah. it, it's difficult to do this remotely. Yeah, um, you set up two or three different remotes. You set up one on one stand, one on one stand, and one in the center grass area, mm -hmm. and you literally give people the opportunity to step up into those and speak well, to everybody. Well, that's the thing. People can't just stand up and shout. They right. have to use the mics. Exactly. And, and this is, all the, the other better. thing is, yeah. is people aren't used to sitting in an all-day meeting. I know what this is like. I used to work in a town that had an all-day Saturday meeting. But I think I would like to run that by Dan and, and Barb first. Mm -hmm. Plus, well, we have meeting. to schedule town council. Wait, mm -hmm. That is that's also yeah. a critical mm -hmm. piece of this is scheduling town council. And so barbecue? we need yeah. to make sure that <laughs> would work. So I I'm, think I'm that's something that, that, people would love that. I, Barb and Dan really need to talk that through. Yeah, yeah. we're usually good for uh, six to 10 on a Monday night. So I literally would schedule, you know, nine to one. And you should be able to wrap it up by 1pm on a gorgeous Saturday morning. And I think you know, if it's set up correctly, what happens if it rains? Well, you always set up a tentative date if you're going to do an outdoor event. You always set up a rain date can immediately. I, can I, can I, this is Chris Harris, a resident and a taxpayer. Uh, could I weigh in on this? Only if you bring like, in the I chicken. I think it's absolutely essential. I think it's absolutely essential. You have town meetings sooner rather than later, and that you prove to the people that we can manage the town and move forward even under a crisis situation. I think that is very important. That, that gets done yeah. and there is lots of creative people out there that can make this happen right. in an external environment with tents big tents and that'll create a little economic activity and that's a good thing for everybody and so you know and socially distanced etc mm -hmm. and give them the opportunity to weigh in on the issues that you have on the warrant etc there there this is this can be done in a timely manner, in a cost-effective manner, in a creative manner, and I don't doubt, based on the people I know in this town, that that can't be done. 
I think that's what the town should be focused on. Not delaying, 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 and saying we're going to have to postpone and all this stuff. Keep the wheels going. Keep the wheels yeah. going. And Chris. don't stop them. That's Chris. all I can say. So as, as right a now. And as a taxpayer. But, but as the governor, he said we can't meet more than 10 people. So we got, we got to wait and see what they're going to do. We're going to plan this for the 1st of June, and then we're going to figure out from there where we go. We need to be mindful of how to safely set this up, Chris. It's a, that's for everyone. more safety than anything. In but. as cost-effective a manner as possible, and yeah. tents are expensive. Yeah. Um, so the logistics of that needs to be worked out by the people that really have to manage it, well, since, and that's not me. Yeah, that's since, Dan and Barb. Since Dan, it's Dan's council. meeting, let's just see what he has to say, and then we'll check back on Tuesday I don't know night. if Dan can come on Tuesday, but I will ask him. Yeah, or even check in beforehand or whatever. Hey, yeah, and tent, there's ways rentals, tent rentals are a legit COVID-19 <laughs> Oh, there you I go. Know. She already looked it up. Yeah, well, we still have to pay for them, We Carol. still have yeah. to pay for this with some money, and that's what we're worried about. Yeah, yeah there, I mean, there's things that we still can do by, uh, you know, like cruise ships or even all-inclusive resorts. Every time you walk into a buffet restaurant, they automatically do a squirt of hand sanitizer. You can have every resident do that and still use Frontiers Auditorium, and you can hand out right. the least expensive surgical face masks because we do know that this is aerosolized so you don't want people coughing and yeah. right. you can make it a very sterile environment yeah. and very reasonable we'll so whatever the board yeah. wants to do i'm more than happy to work with yeah. you thank yeah. you if you have it outside you know the amount of mosquito repellent that carolyn's gonna have to come up with <laughs> is ridiculous. i knew that was coming <laughs> hey that's a legit cost too that's right she's gonna get budgets all around all right, any other business for tonight? Oh, my God. Or are we good? <laughs> okay, so, Carolyn, we need to meet well, next week, next, next Tuesday, Tuesday at 6. Is that good for you? Uh, next Tuesday at 6, that's the 31st? Yes. Yes, yes I can do this. So, okay. Oh, that's a select board meeting? Yeah. Yes, it'll be to decide on the elections. We need to, actually, we need to post it on a meeting, give people time to see that, because it's a significant change. Oh, yes. No, that's not, not a problem at all. I want to have it have its own Just, space. I'm, I'm honestly, I'm not trying to be a crab, but please um, wipe down everything when we end this meeting. Yeah, okay? we're good. We will. You know, we did last night, too. People, we'll high five everybody. People came and sanitized everything. Yes, I know. They were, they were wonderful. We'll make sure it's clean when we go. Yeah. All right. We won't hug anybody before they leave. I'll take a motion to adjourn. Um, I make that motion. I'll second. All those in favor? I mean, second. I mean, I, she meant it's second. been a long day. I apologize. I meant second. <laughs> okay. Uh, um, I didn't even bring up All those in favor? <laughs> I, Trevor McDaniel. I, David Wolfram. I, Carolyn Nash. She's always a delay. All right. Thank you so much. We'll talk to you soon. And good night, everybody. Thank and you, still, everybody. please be safe. Thank you, Jonathan.